discussion on energy is one that is very central to our lives, very central to our well-being, and very central to everything that we do. I hold this strong opinion that strategies for building resilient businesses will not only constitute action plans to run more productively and efficiently, but also workable initiatives for impacting communities with affordable access to sustainable renewable energy for domestic and entrepreneurial use. We don't live in a silo. We don't have to do this alone. And I'm always um, having discussions with international manufacturers and technology developers and telling them, hey, if we're going to work with you, then you have to guarantee something for me. Technology transfer and knowledge transfer. Uh, you can't hog all this on your own in Europe or China or in India without letting Africa be part of this. We're the ones going to be, we're the ones going to be users of this technology. We want to create jobs for our people. There's so many young people who are coming up in the industry and they need jobs. And there's an opportunity within the energy sector that can actually create those jobs for them. So they should give us, no, they, they should provide knowledge transfer. Who knows, maybe with our knowledge, it can actually contribute for them to develop better technologies. Or yet better, we can actually co-develop these technologies to serve the economy well, to make them much more affordable, to serve the environment better, better, we think of the end of life for them, so that at the end of the day, we don't uh, affect the environment even much further as we're as we introducing more technologies in the market. But also at the end of the day, to really serve the impact and the purpose of what it's intended for. Not everybody has access to grid here, and it wouldn't always make sense to provide a charger to, to a driver. So what we do have are charging stations. It's a network that covers um, covers Kampala intensively and then um, goes all the, we have a solar corridor that goes all the way to Masaka. Now the beauty with this kind of power plant, you can move them from a well. Maybe you want to connect this to a power plant, then you can move that to another region. So it gives you the early generation benefit. You can see you're repaying back um, your investment. So it's also a quick installation and low capital costs. So that is how now we were able to pioneer that and have those megawatts in the grid. Despite making these significant strides around renewable energy, still about one quarter of Kenya's population is without access to electricity. You know, the Energy Progress Report of 2021, partnership between the World Bank and bodies such as IEA, now say that the electrification pace is ahead of the population growth. So doing great work, catching up, um, and really working to address the energy poverty. Of course, we need policy change, changes to diversify the energy mix and public-private partnerships to finance ongoing renewable energy projects. Grab a meal, have fun, enjoy, network, whatever you do. But I also like you to think about where you come from, all right? If your parent doesn't have a clean solution, cooking solution, a nice stove, not a nice, but a stove that responds to needs that respect her health status, think about it, what it is that you can do. In that connection, I urge all participants to seize the opportunity of this year's conference to inspire external engagement on renewable energy awareness with possible partners.